Hey guys, Cody here, KIG Outdoors. Today we're back out in the shop working on the John Boat to Bass Boat conversion part 10. Does it matter? No, not really, but one too many. So hopefully we won't have, but maybe one more video after this before we actually put this thing in the water So and do some fishing. What we're doing today, we're gonna take this storage bin and we're gonna turn it into a live well. Now, uh, the ideal that come this came from was uh, actually another fellow YouTuber, his name was Michael Lopez, Tiny Boat Nation. He turned one of these into a live well. Um, he actually cut the dang thing in half and then welded it, plastic welded it back together to fit a custom size opening that he had in his uh, boat. So um, They're pretty tough, There's, uh, they're, they're pretty rigid, they're really flexible and um, really, really cheap. So. You know, these things, this happens to be a 17 gallon uh, storage box, storage bin. Same ones you use to put your Christmas ornaments in, uh, put them down in the basement, but forget about them. Basically the same thing. Uh, I think this thing cost $8.99. This was the Commander XL, I believe. Comes with a lid. Uh, the plastic on it, it's, it's pretty durable. I mean, it's pretty pretty strong but uh this is actually the lid and what this is i'm using the lid for is actually a splash guard so just imagine um there's a square cut out here and what happens is this sits here and if water you know if you hit a wave and the water rolls back hopefully you know this kind of this lip kind of keeps the water in and then where it's also recessed if it does splash out hopefully it goes back in the live well and you don't get none in your boat that's the idea behind it but um I was using a jigsaw to cut this plastic and I just want to go ahead and throw this out here real quick. Um, I guess it was a little too aggressive uh, once the material started getting removed. It just was too violent and uh, actually took off more than I wanted it, you know, in a certain area and uh, deemed this unuseful now. So just be careful. I think what I'm going to do on the next one, because I've got one more, I think I'm actually going to use a grinder. Now remember you wear safety glasses and uh, probably a respirator, you don't want to be breathing this stuff. But uh, the grinder, the thought behind it is it actually heats it up as you're cutting it. So it makes a cleaner cut, less uh, impact towards the plastic. And uh, yeah, that's the thought behind it. But uh, the stuff is pretty daggone. I mean, you can, the plastic is just, I don't know. It's just kind of hard to describe what it has that point and once you cross it there's no going back but uh, so what i want to go ahead and talk about is uh the stuff that i bought to put into my live well now guys these live wells they can be expensive uh, it just depends on what you are wanting let's say um we'll just go ahead and start talking about some of the products i bought and I'll put like like a little picture of the kit or whatever I bought from the different websites and stuff like that, so you can see it actually, you know, what I paid for them. But I'm gonna tell you, but that way you can double check me. Uh, this first off, you need two pumps. Now I chose to go with these uh, Atwood uh, pumps. They are a 320 gallon per hour pump. Um, I had to buy two of them. The reason you need to buy two of them is one's for the fresh water and it mounts to the, the rear of the boat and the other one is a recirc pump. Uh, it just recirculates the water, keeps it fresh, keeps the bubbles going, keeps the oxygen in it and you can also turn it into a way to get the water out of your live well. Now, these things, you can actually buy them as a kit. They come with the screen, come with the nut, they come with the barb, which I broke the barb when I test fitted it so I had to go buy another one from uh, the good old uh, Lowe's. But uh, they come with hose. I think they come with like like 20 inches of hose, three quarter inch. Uh, guys, this thing isn't going to win no marathon, but it's going to get water into the live well. And that's something that you have to think about. It, you know, you're building a live well. You don't want a, a thousand gallon per hour pump on a live well. You know, I mean, if you do, go ahead, guys. And that's what I'm talking about. You can spend $80 or you can spend $300. I don't care. But what I did is I basically spent right around $100 to build this live well. Like I said, two pumps. And then uh, really the only other big key thing you need is this little thing right here. This is made by Flowrite. And it's a, uh, I, I don't really know the, the correct name of it, but I just call it a, like a divider or uh, 
So you can, it's an aerator when you're pumping, recirking the water and you're just having your pump on and it's just sitting there running. It aerates the water or if you pull this out, it has a diversion that you can pump the water out of your live well, which is th um, things like $23, $24. Uh, it's almost a must to have to, to build this live well. Like I said, you don't really have to if you get into the big expensive pumps, the, the bi-directional pumps, you can, it gets complicated quick guys. So that's what I've used. Of course you're gonna need about, I think I ended up buying 20 foot of three quarter inch clear hose and packs on packs on packs of clamps. <laughs> you wanna clamp everything down. So that's what I'm up against guys. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm just basically going to do a time lapse of me uh, installing, installing it and then uh, we'll put some water in it and we'll talk about it. So here we go guys. One thing I forgot to mention is I went ahead and installed my, my fresh water in with the hose already installed. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in that kit, you get an aerator in it. So I actually have another spare aerator, aerator but uh, yeah, I've already got it basically uh, ran just so that it for time's sake what I decided to do this is actually uh, angle and I actually gonna let the live well sit on that I have a uh, foam that I'm going to put in the live well come in here the actual handle sets on it and, and on the foam at the same time so just kind of a cheap easy way to put to mount this live well because of the it's gonna be a lot of weight you know so I just thought I'd mention that real quick and uh, let's go ahead and get started
The blue here that you actually see is uh, electric. I actually use the blue conduit on everything. Fresh water comes in through here from the rear. Pump comes in through the aerator. Once you pull the aerator, it comes through here and shoots out the side of the boat. All right, guys, there it is. Live well's in, it's complete. Fits in there real good. The lid closes great. Doesn't catch on nothing. The uh, support actually sits down inside there. The lip turned out great. Um, cutting it with a grinder was uh, definitely a good way to cut it. Uh, one thing to note, uh, when you cut it with a grinder, there it makes really sharp edges, so you need to go in there with sandpaper and cut that down so you don't cut yourself when you reach into the live well. Um, everything's sealed, no leaks, like I said. Uh, one thing I'll let you know is uh, where the pump goes into the bottom of this tank, um, I'll show a video right now, I actually had to cut the frame to try to get that, that um, pump down as far as I could so I could get you know all the water out of the, the live well. Well, you run into a problem with that screen fitting onto the actual pump and then having clearance underneath of it. So. What happened is, as you'll notice, there's about two inches of water that I cannot get out. Um, one thing that I'm looking at in, you know, trying to research and probably will do in the future is put like a uh, kayak drain plug, one that twists in there and just drill a hole and then seal it in there and just to be able to get the rest of the water out and let it go out the back of the boat when, you know, you're not on the lake, obviously. Um, the second thing was the actual tote. Um, this is actually the original, and you can see the hole. Uh, when I actually made this tote and I drilled it, it cracked on me. And what happened was when I was putting the pump in there and I was having that problem with the clearance issue with the frame, um, it was pushing down on the actual um, hole and it cracked it. And that's when I went in and notched out the frame and uh, could not use this tote anymore. But uh, I had another one. It was my storage bin, and I wish... I would have paid attention to this, and this is why I'm telling you, because uh, if you'll notice on the inside of this one, um, it is, has actually a, a smooth bottom with uh, raised uh, portions, so the water, uh, you could actually put a drain plug right here, and all the water would channel down to it, and you would almost get almost all the water out of it. The one that's actually in here has uh, indentions where the water cannot escape. Everywhere on that uh, tote, there's like half inch indentions, and uh, they're all over the tote. And it's probably something that I'm probably going to have to change out. Wish I would have noticed it. It's what happens when you finally get water in it and you sit back and let it run and watch it and try to do everything that you expect it to do, and you're like, wow, man, I can't get all the water out. So <laughs> that's another thing. And also, um, the way that the frame is made, it, it doesn't allow me to run a gas strut, and I can probably see this being a problem in the future of not being able to, you know, just throw this back and put a fish in it and then close it back. I may notch the frame to allow to clear that, ga that gas strut. I probably won't, I don't know, I'll probably just put a strap on it so that I can just throw it back and kind of just leave it there and then slam it when I want to close it. Um, other than that, guys, everything worked like it was supposed to. Like I said, no leaks. Um, it's bolted in. It's going to secure. And uh, it's ready to put some fish in it. Um, really, all we have left is some minor things. Uh, if you notice, everywhere on the back half of the boat, I painted. I took all the carpet off, painted it, painted all the frame. And one of the main reasons I did that wasn't really to to cure the help seal the wood but it, it will help was that uh where my rod locker is it actually shows a little bit of the frame and i wanted to blend it in better 
plus kind of looks cooler when you look in there and see uh, you don't see just plain wood so uh, as you'll seen in the video the blue conduit the switch panels stuff like this guys everything is actually pretty much done it's wired up bilge pump intake lights trolling motor everything's ready to go so um, in the probably in my next video my final video I have one piece of carpet I still have to add and uh, have a little bit of painting to do I may not let that stop me if I get a nice dry day and I can get back there I'll probably just go on out and try the boat out and go from there but uh, a lot of stuff's already done I kind of came out here and did stuff off camera like I said I was gonna do and uh, yeah we don't have much more guys so hopefully the next video you see is a big sign says I'm done and it's time to take it fishing for its maiden voyage um, guys that's all I've got I hope you like this video um, if you're new to the channel hit that like button hit that subscribe button turn on that bell notification and uh, guys we'll catch you on the next one